So what I will talk today is something a little bit more on CT. We're using CT, by the way, also for Corona. But I want to talk about the advances in new technologies in CT and what artificial intelligence actually is doing for us. Here are my disclosures. Now, if you look at our department, we are a radiology department, which is one of the biggest in Europe. About a third of our people are working in research and roughly 90 of those are in artificial intelligence and image analysis. Now, if you look at the evolution of artificial intelligence in radiology, uh, then it's interesting to go back, let's say, 50 years. Uh, here's a nice article in which uh, features from an X-ray have been described, have been put into a multivariate analysis to ultimately predict whether something on an X-ray is malignant or benign, and also to predict outcome. 50 years later, we're doing exactly the same. That was to, uh, 1963. This is now 2013. The PANCAN study from Canada has looked at the probability of cancer in pulmonary nodules in lung screening, and it came up with a good model, which is actually a multivariate analysis based on features that we can identify on these chest X rays. For example, the size of a nodule or the speculation of a nodule. Now, very similar to then, we have images. From these images, we extract features. These features go into a classifier, and the classifier makes a prediction. Now, the features are usually handcrafted by us humans. We know that a speculated nodule is probably more likely to be malignant than a smooth one. So that is a potential feature. Size is another feature. So we think of the features, and then the features are extracted either by people or by a computer. And that gives us the prediction. It looks a little bit like that. We have our voxel data. This voxel data is uh, filtered to enhance certain features, for example, vessels or nodules. Then these features are quantified and extracted. And then ulti ultimately, a classifier says whether something is a nodule or not a nodule. And that actually helps us to predict uh, where a nodule in a chest uh, CT would sit. Now, deep learning is a convolutional neural network that works totally differently. You have different layers in which each layer is calculated from the previous layers by putting various weights on the connection. So each nodule in an layer acts as a virtual neuron that is connected to other neurons. And the strength of the connection determines ultimately the output. And during the teaching process, these strengths are actually calculated. And this training process is slow, but the prediction process, once you put something new in, is really fast. And the good thing about this is we don't have to come up with features, but the computer finds these features himself. So instead of going through these features, the deep convolution network does everything and comes up with a prediction. Now, these convolutional neural networks are pretty old. They're already 30, 40 years old. But with the new computing power and more layers of neurons, these deep learning systems, deep means deep layers, uh, have become very powerful. Here's an example how this can be put into clinical practice. This is a competition, an international competition that uh, we provided data for. It was partially set up by our, our institution. The organizer promised $1 million for the, be uh, for the best algorithms. And actually, a huge number of groups participated. And what you can see here is the performance of these algorithms on an ROC curve. In black, you can see the PANCAN algorithm that I showed you earlier from 2013, plus some human inter interpretation, namely speculation, yes or no. And you can see that all the algorithms from the artificial networks are better. And if you combine these algorithms, you get a really, really high uh, area under the uh, ROC curve. So these AI systems nowadays create performances which are better at the performance of humans. Now let me go to something completely different, namely CT technology. And let me show you how CT technology is actually pushed forward by artificial intelligence, especially if you want to go to 
higher spatial resolution. If you want to do that, you need smaller detector sizes, more projections, a smaller focal spot. All of these features actually create image noise and image noise becomes limiting. So you do everything to reduce this image noise. For example, reduce the dead space between detector elements, reduce the electronic noise, get better detector materials, stronger tube. But most importantly, you need novel image reconstruction techniques. Here's an example with a hybrid iterative reconstruction of a chest X-ray, a chest CT with an ultra high resolution CT scanner at a reasonable uh, radiation dose. And you can see exquisite detail on this high resolution CT. In this example, you see there's fibrosis, emphysema, and a small cancer. Now, if you look at the abdomen, noise becomes very uh, prominent, even at a dose which is in the range of the classic reference levels, 20 milligrays. If you look uh, at the bones, you can see exquisite quality, and the solution to the noise is actually using model-based iterative reconstruction. If you do that, you get exquisite detail, low noise, but there's a but, and the but is that it takes time to reconstruct these images. It is very time consuming to get this excellent image quality using model-based iterative reconstruction. So the question is, can we do something more clever to get to this result faster and with less effort? And the solution to that is deep learning reconstruction. Now, what you can do by a deep learning reconstruction, you can decide to decrease image noise, but you can also use it to improve sharpness. Here's an example where you can see the pixelation and the classic interpolation as number B and this high resolution uh, deep learning reconstruction that is number C. So a really good resolution from a low resolution data set. How is it done? You take the highest quality of images that you can get, model-based iterative reconstruction, enough dose. And from that, you create raw data of the same patient with high image noise. You reconstruct these images, and then you try to train a, a network to come from this input data, the noisy data, to this high quality output data. You do that not only for one image, but for thousands of images, or actually subgroups of uh, voxels within these images. Now, this training process is really slow and can take hours to weeks. But the ultimate reconstruction, when you have a new low uh, quality data set, is very high and very fast. So you can get a really fast, high quality output by doing that, a deep learning reconstruction. Here is some measurement from a Japanese group that actually shows that uh, the image noise with deep learning reconstruction is the same as the image noise with hybrid reconstruction with five times more dose. 100 MA tube current produces the same noise as 20 MA with deep learning reconstruction. Does that mean we can reduce the image, uh, the image dose by a factor of five? And the answer is unfortunately no, because if we do that, we get the same noise measured as standard deviation in the image, but the noise texture changes. It becomes much more rough. However, we can still reduce the dose by roughly 30% and get a better, finer noise texture at this lower dose. So deep learning reconstruction allows us to get better quality at a lower dose. And this how, is how it looks in clinical practice. Hybrid iterative reconstruction on an older scanner, one millimeter sections, you see that the joint space in the hip is not really clearly defined. There's quite a bit of noise. And on the other side, you see a deep learning reconstruction called ACE on the Canon scanner on an 0.5 millimeter section for a high resolution CT. And if you compare that to a five millimeter on this on the regular scanner, Still, the 0.5 millimeter images are much superior in terms of image quality, noise, and spatial resolution. 
On the satellite reconstructions, the classic image noise patterns in the center of the scan field here in the region of the prostate go away. You get excellent image quality in this area. And the dose actually can be reduced. Here we have measured the dose at our scanner. And at the beginning, uh, before ACE, we were at the US achievable dose level, which is below the reference level by one standard deviation. And now with the deep learning reconstruction, we actually have reduced it even further. We're now roughly half the dose of the achievable dose level. So we're really very, very low in image uh, the radiation dose that we're using on these scanners with our deep learning reconstruction. If you compare it to filtered back projection, the image quality is excellent even for extremely low doses like 0.3 millisievert in this specific uh, example. CTDI 0.6 millisievert. You see also that in the mediastinum where noise on low dose uh, scans is also high, we can reduce that to normal levels and even in the abdomen, where noise becomes really prohibitive, we can bring it back to a very good image quality at very low dose. Now, this can be organ specifically optimized. And here you see what happens now with the newest uh, situation on our high end regular scanners. At a dose of 3.2 millisieverts, one millimeter sections, we get excellent image quality. And that despite large patient sizes, 100 kV, 2.9 millisievert CTDI, and still excellent quality. Compare that to our regular scanner, five millimeter images, deep learning outperforms that by far. Deep learning reconstructions have been optimized for the brain, giving you excellent gray white matter differentiation, uh, excellent CT angiographies at really low doses and uh, also low noise despite the high resolution in the area of uh, the, uh, the bones and for here example a calcaneus. A study from Japan showed nicely that hybrid iterative reconstruction is superior to, uh, sorry, deep learning is superior to hybrid iterative reconstruction. It gives you sharper demarcation for example of stents and lower noise with these digital uh, deep learning reconstructions. Here in a couple of examples from a regular uh, scanner, where you can see excellent image quality using these deep learning reconstructions for cardiac. And the number of images that were actually rated excellent was much higher than for hybrid iterative reconstruction. You can also use it for applications such as dual energy, in which we can get an uh, excellent display of the perfusion in the lung. Here's a an example of a patient with a, a wedge-shaped perfusion defect, or an example of uh, an iodine map superimposed on a, a low KVP image. And for these uh, images, deep learning reconstruction has been used to allow a rapid KVP switching uh, with excellent image quality. So to summarize, Deep learning has helped us do lots of things. And in image reconstruction, it reduces image noise. It improves image sharpness. It keeps artifacts at a low rate. Uh, and it is fast. Uh, it means that thin sections deep learning reconstructions are just as good as thick sections hybrid reconstructions, which allows us to look at much more details in our scans. Further developments will in include reconstructions of undersampled scans, so scans in which we have not enough projections, dual energy applications, but also this wide field of image evaluation and workflow improvement. And with that, I thank you for your attention.